This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hey, it's Julia, and I have a very special yin yoga for sleep ready for you. This practice is a beautiful practice to help nourish your joints, to balance your body, and to help you get really restful sleep, which as you know, is essential for your health. So as you move through this practice, focus on softening your body, deepening your breath, and really relaxing into each and every pose. To get started, let's just come to a comfortable seat. Let your spine come up tall, roll your shoulder blades down your back, and then turn over your right shoulder, right hand behind you, left hand can rest gently on your right thigh, lift up through the crown of your head, and then just gently turn your gaze over your right shoulder. So as we go through today's practice, we'll be taking some yin yoga poses. They might look familiar in shape. However, in yin yoga, we don't pull at our muscles. Instead, we soften and relax into the pose. I'll give you a lot of pointers along the way. Good, let's take that twist to the other side. Hand can rest gently on your thigh. Lift up tall all the way right through the top of your head so your crown is on, and then turn your gaze. Just offering a little bit of movement for your spine right here. Allow your eyeballs to spin as far over your shoulder as they can go. Good, and then come back through the middle. We'll start in child's pose, and as we get going into this deep stretch class, I want you to know that you can always grab a pillow and use it for any amount of support that you need. Shift back into child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch, your knees wide. Let your belly drape between your thighs. Drip your forehead down to the earth. Often, we will find this really active child's pose in the beginning of our practice, but to take a more restorative approach to this, you may want to notice if you're holding tension in the shoulders and instead just let the elbows bend. When we look at the quieter side of our practice, which we often call yin, as opposed to yang, the hot, sweaty practice. The yin practice is going to address connective tissue in the body. It's going to give the joints an overall feeling of balance. And that also allows important fluids to come back into the joints to nourish them, especially if you tend to go towards compression or any fixation in areas of the body. This is going to address that, loosen it up so you'll feel better. Take a few more breaths here in child's pose. As you breathe today, allow your breath to be really soft and natural and allow your belly to be soft and natural as well. So no drawing it in, no hugging in, just soft. So you can take off the skinny jeans today, let the belly hang just a bit. Good. On the next breath in, come to table. Drop the belly, lift the chest, come into just a little gentle cow pose. I myself used to sort of discredit these slower practices. I'm like, what am I getting out of this? I have to go harder. And what I found is that harder is not always better. We definitely need to build into our routine days for rest, days to nourish our joints, and days for our body to be able to restore itself. Round into a cat pose. Press into the ground, gaze back at your belly button. Let the back of your heart dome towards the ceiling. It should feel like a nice stretch between the shoulder blades. Good. 
back through neutral. We'll go into sleeping swan. So sometimes in a yin practice, we call poses by different names just to give them a different energy. So sleeping swan is actually half pigeon. Bring your right knee forward and allow your heel to kind of cheat in towards the groin a little bit. If you notice that you rock a lot onto your right hip, that's where your pillow or bolster can be handy. You could always slide that right underneath your uh, right sit bone. Come down to your elbows, and then if that's feeling all right, you can come all the way down with your forehead down. For me, I like to start upright just to feel the pose out before I go all the way down. So this is a posture that is so beneficial if you tend to get pain while driving. So if you get pain in your hip, down your IT band, maybe even into your foot, um, this posture can help release some of the deep hip muscles that tend to get very bound up. It's also a posture that allows us to get acquainted with our hips a little bit better. So if you are stuck at a desk job and, and maybe you feel like you're stuck in one position for a long period of time, this is a posture that really starts to bring some freedom of movement into the joint. Our yin practice actually comes from um, a similar theory to acupuncture. So when you take yin poses, you hold them for a long period of time with a little less muscular force. And there's actually an entire system of yin yoga that addresses acupuncture lines, so the meridians in the body. So you're really getting the tremendous benefit of this practice from staying patient and holding the pose for a while. This is such a beneficial skill as well when we have um, weight loss goals or we have fitness goals for ourselves because sometimes we're like, why can't it just happen fast? Why doesn't it happen right now? And cultivating that level of patience so that we can really go uh, the long haul for ourselves and for our goals is essential. Take three more breaths here. There's no such thing as a quick fix when it comes to taking care of your health. Uh, the best way is a slow and steady, methodical uh, and habitual approach. Um, but that doesn't mean that it always has to be something that feels ugly in the body. Sometimes it can feel really good, like sleeping swan. Great, come on up to your hands. Step it back to a tabletop. And what I like to do after any of these long holds is just find one nice counterbalancing pose. And for this, you'll just step your right foot back, dig the toes down into the yoga mat and press the heel back. You'll feel this beautiful release for the back of the knee. So another technique that we utilize in these longer hold practices is this idea of compression. So you're actually compressing a joint intentionally. And then when you release it, you get all of this fresh oxygenated blood. You also get new space and just that really good feeling of release that comes into the joint once you move out of the pose. Great. Right knee can come down. We'll take sleeping swan on the left. The left knee will come up by the wrist. The heel will cheat in towards the groin. If you're feeling any pain in your knee or you're rocking a lot onto your left hip, that's where this pillow or bolster can be super duper effective just to slide it right underneath the sit bones. Come down onto the elbows. You can also lay your forehead all the way down. So as you settle into the left side here, look for any areas of your body that might be unintentionally or intentionally gripping that you can release. In yoga, we have this concept of stira and sukha. So these complementary opposites. We need the effort, but we also need ease. Similarly, that's why we're doing a yin practice here to counterbalance all of that yang activity that we had in our hit training. The body is looking to be balanced. That's, that's really what we, we're going for here. And so that's why this program has both the intense, sweaty, active, challenging workouts, as well as these more slow, steady, um, and really enjoyable um, programs as well. You want to be able to bring your body into balance for the long haul. So I hope that when you look at any fitness activity, it's not just for tomorrow or for a pair of pants or for a dress that you want to fit into. It's really so that you feel vital and you feel energized and you feel really good in the skin that you're in. Take about three more breaths.
Really nice. Notice if the breath is too active. If you can, keep it really slow. Slow and steady. When you can regulate your breath, you're also aiding the body's ability to tap into that rest and digest system. Come on up to your palms. Step back to the table, so I'll move the bolster out of the way. And again, just that sweet counterbalance can feel really good for the back of the left knee. Tuck the toes, press through the heel, getting some juicy length through the back of the knee. Feels really good on the joint. Great. And then from there, we're going to step ourselves up into a malasana just for a moment to continue that aid in digestions. So your left foot and your right foot are going to come up with the toes turned out and then just drop the sit bones. And for some of us, our tailbone goes right down to the floor. And for some of us, we're a little more upright in um, what I like to call a catcher stance, like if you played baseball. Um, but for a lot of us, um, being down will feel good. If your heels are up a little bit, that's all right as long as there's no pain in the knee. If your heels are up a lot, you could always slide that pillar or bolster underneath your heels for a little more support. This is a wonderful posture for, di for digestion. It also helps you if you have any low back pain because it just allows the sacrum to sit with the pelvis in a really, really natural and healthy way. And just allow your breath to be soft into your very lowest abdomen. So let the belly hang out a little bit. Um, it's where breath goes. It's a good thing. Yeah. I know um, as a woman, we Often I get the message to, to hug everything in or to suck it in. And when it comes to breath, you're just restricting your ability to breathe. So I want you to be able to send your breath as low into your pelvic floor as you can and really feel the fullness of your breath. Good. Take about one more deep breath like that. Beautiful. So we're going to come on to our backs. And when you do that, you may still want to keep this pillow or a bolster handy if you have one. So we'll come on down to our backs. Recline on down. We'll go into a posture called legs up the wall. Uh, it's also known as waterfall pose if you don't have a wall. <laughs> and slide your pillar or bolster right underneath your sacrum lift your feet up. So the idea here is that you find a place where your feet can float and you can soften your knees a little bit and that'll allow the leg bones to really just drop into the pelvis, into the hip socket. And there should be no strain in the back of the leg. So if there is, you can bend the knees a little bit more. This is an inversion. And when you're in an inversion, it reduces swelling in the ankles, it reduces swelling in the calves and in the feet, but it also aids in the return of blood back to your heart. So your legs don't have to work as hard um, to get all of that blood flow back. So you get this nice quality of ease for the legs. Additionally, whenever we're upside down, the body and the mind, the the brain really receives an additional pressure of blood towards the head. And so it responds by slowing down the heart rate and you get that secondary effect of also having a nice relaxed sensation in the body. So we talked a little bit about this being yoga for sleep. This is a fantastic pose to help you with sleep so that you can optimize your metabolism. And I think when you have really good sleep patterns, you also start to notice that you have a better indication of what your cravings really mean during the day. Are you craving fuel in the form of food because you really need it? Or are you just tired, you're fatigued, and what you really need is sleep, and maybe you're, you're grabbing for something sugary or you're grabbing for something quick um, because you're just trying to keep your energy level up. 
And so when we can get really clear, when we can find that balance, we're better able to understand our eating patterns and our sleeping patterns and optimize them so that we feel good in our body. You might notice the more time we spend in this pose that your toes get a little bit cold and that's totally fine and really normal. They might tingle a little bit as well. That's okay. We'll just be here for a few more breaths. Good. Take one more big inhale. As you exhale, let the breath just escape the body. Draw the knees into the chest. And then gently place the feet down. Slide that bolster out from underneath you. We'll move into a supine twist. For supine twist in a yin style, I do like to have my bolster handy. So if you are using one, you're welcome to slide that down between your calves and your thighs. And then just shift your knees over to your right, hips to the left, and the arms can come out. So when we come into a yin posture, something that we have to moderate is our urge to pull or tug. Allow the body to just soften into this twist. When it comes to these longer held postures, you don't have to put as much force on the body because gravity and time are doing the majority of the work. Twisting is another great thing that aids in digestion. And when we are stimulating this rest and digest response in our body by taking deep diaphragmatic breaths, by slowing down our movement, we're signaling to the brain that this is the time to really restore and renew. And then this physical shape also aids in digestion so that the way we're processing food and elimination of food from the body is something that feels comfortable and it's something that happens efficiently and we feel really good. Great. Notice if you're feeling a little stuck in the shoulder blades sometimes when you hold these postures for a little bit longer that can happen. So if that is happening for you, you can always just scoot that right shoulder blade out from underneath you a little bit farther so that your chest can be nice and broad and you can take really deep breaths here. If you are someone who just love, love, loves to move, this style of slow and steady practice might be a challenge for your brain. So in that way, the stira or the effort of this practice is a mental focus, even though the physical is more of ease and restoration. Great. So we'll move this twist to the other side. Scoot your hips over, this time to the right. Knees can come to the left. Arms will stay nice, wide, and open. And you'll just settle into this side of the twist. Staying with the long holds of these postures can help us cultivate patience. And whenever we have big hopes and dreams and large goals for ourselves, having patience is critical so that we are really present with all of the small changes that we might otherwise miss. So sometimes we're always looking for that big change. Maybe the number on the scale moves or um, you say, oh, I haven't um, felt this good in my clothes in this many years. But what about the subtle, smaller changes that are also happening? You're getting stronger, more flexible. You're cultivating deeper mental focus. You're tapping into your intuition for your well-being and the things that you choose to do for movement and the things you choose to fuel your body with in terms of food. So there's also those secondary, subtle, small benefits that we might miss if we don't have the patience to sort of stay and pay attention. And truthfully, in the long run, those end up being the things that we really enjoy the most, how empowered and good we feel in our own skin. Take a deep breath in and a big breath out. Again, like that, deeply in, big breath out, 
So come on back to the middle. You can set the bolster aside. We'll just get a nice inner thigh stretch with butterfly pose. This is also just a great way to open up the front line of the body. Soles of the feet together. The knees will open up wide and I like to take goalpost arms here. So the elbows bend, backs of the hands touch the earth. And you'll just notice that this posture allows you to reinstate the natural curve of your lumbar and then the weight of your knees and the heaviness of the thigh bones helps you release in the inner groin. If you feel like there's too much tugging on the inner groin, you can play with the positioning of your feet or you could slide pillows underneath your knees. The breath here can be soft and full. When it comes to balance in the body, stretchier is not always better. We want to look for a better word than flexibility really is range of motion. We want to optimize our range of motion. So once you find a place where you're like, oh, I feel open, I feel good in my joints, you don't have to add any additional force. Just be. And learning how to simply accept where we're at and just be with ourselves is so, so, so beneficial because then we're not always looking for the next best thing. We're learning how to have contentment and satisfaction right now. And when we're in an optimal range of motion, our muscles are healthy and our joints are healthy and we're not as exposed to injury. Take about three more breaths here. This pose should feel really, really nice. One more time, in and out. <sighs> because we've created so much slack in the inner thighs, use your hands to close the legs. So place your hands underneath your thigh bones and gently push your thighs back together. Knock the knees inward and then gently rock side to side. this added bonus of a low back and hip massage too here. Great. Now bring your legs into your chest and compress them down into the belly. Draw your forehead up to meet your knees and take a deep breath in. On your exhale, Shavasana corpse pose. Lay on out. Just because we've been in a slow steady practice doesn't mean we skip our Shavasana. This is important time for you to cultivate deep rest. Allow the body to just melt into the yoga mat. We spend a lot of time trying to get really hard, trying to control, trying to manipulate our body into a different shape. Shavasana is a time to balance all of that out. Get soft, surrender, and allow your body to be in whatever shape it currently is in. You might even be able to hear the breath wave in and out, a soothing, gentle noise. These deep, slow, and steady breaths are nourishing for the entire body, for your nervous system, and they calm the mind. Great. Take one more breath in and out. This time, sigh out the mouth and roll over to your right side. Gently press up to a comfortable seat. We'll meet seated with our hands at heart center. Well, I hope this evening you sleep great after that yin yoga practice. I'm so glad that you took it on. Way to go. We have more amazing flows coming up for you. So stick with it. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, namaste.
Today's bonus tip is all about breaking down a common phrase you probably have heard me say and maybe other yoga teachers say, and perhaps you were scratching your head going, what does that mean? And the phrase is, listen to your body. Well, have you ever thought, well, could my body speak louder or leave me a voicemail because I don't understand what it's saying? I've felt that way, especially when I have been trying something new or I'm going to a new fitness class um, or maybe a new yoga pose. I'm not really sure what my body's telling me. But meditation and yin practices, like our slow moving practices or just our stillness, quiet practices, are really great ways to get more in touch with the signals that our body is sending. So what signals should we be looking for? Well, first things first, we have to take a step back and say, I'm not gonna react, I'm just gonna be open. So just this willingness to feel sensation without immediately attaching something to it. So let's say you are in a, a bunch of squats. You gotta do 20 squats. Eventually, your muscles are gonna start to burn we can say, mm, my muscles are burning without immediately saying, oh my goodness, something's wrong. My legs are going to fall off. That's it. Right? We know that that would be, that would be crazy. Our legs aren't going to fall off. We can do squats. I've done a bunch before and, and last I've heard, nobody's ever lost their legs in squats. So the sensation of burning in your muscles is just sensation. So being willing to step into some sensation is number one when it comes to listening to our body. Number two is understanding what the communication of the sensation is. So sensation is simply communication that our nervous system is basically giving us from somewhere else in our body. So the communication might be telling you, mm, this is uncomfortable, or I've been sitting in meditation for a really long time and all I wanna do is itch my nose, right? And we get that communication. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to do anything about it. It just means that we have to listen and say, what is this communication? Sometimes the communication with the squats example is discomfort. Like you're starting to feel the burn of a lot of squats. Sometimes the communication is pleasure. Like you really enjoy Shavasana and it just feels super good. Sometimes the sensation is relief. Maybe you stretch your muscles and ah, it just feels nice. Maybe the communication is pain. You uh, step sideways the wrong way and your ankle turns and you feel that zing and you immediately know, whoop, don't do that. That was a painful feeling. So sensation is communication. And when we start to listen to our body, we get more skilled at identifying what the message is that our body wants us to receive. And then the third thing is that we have to be willing to either change or stay put depending on the communication. So let's say it is just the aching, quaking, burning muscles from a really strong workout. The signal there might be, oh my goodness, this is so uncomfortable, but you know that you're strong and can stick through it all the way until the set is done, right? So the sensation didn't necessarily mean you needed to quit. It actually meant you had to dig in, find some willpower and keep going. But if the sensation is something that is painful or something that needs to be changed, or maybe it's just you're exhausted and this really is no longer serving you, you need to cut your workout short, then maybe the willingness to simply stop and say, you know what, I've done enough today is the right answer. When we start to sit still, get into a meditative practice, we can listen to the sensations that our body is sending us we can be really skilled at understanding what the communication is, and we can also separate the communication from our action. Maybe our action is something that we never even thought. This practice is really helpful when we're exercising, but it's also helpful in other aspects of our life, especially when we're doing tough things like changing our diet or our routine. We are inherently lazy creatures that seek out comfort. That's just what we do. So there's going to be days where we are like, mm, I don't want a salad. What I really want is french fries. But we know that that craving is just communication. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to reach for the french fries. Unless you really want the french fries. And french fries are delicious. And that's okay too.
right? So when we decide to tune in and listen, we feel a little bit more in tuned. We feel also a little bit more empowered that the choices that we're making are really strong and wise, and they don't come from reactivity, but instead they come from sitting with ourselves and really getting to know what's going on in the inside. So if these kind of practices are new to you, that's okay. We get better with them at practice and newsflash, no one is ever perfect at it. So this is a lifelong practice of committing to listening to the signals of the body. So as we continue on this journey and start upping the intensity of our workouts even more, this practice of really taking time to tune in is essential. And as we'll talk about tomorrow, sometimes all of these external messages that we get, the number on the scale or counting calories or even our own goals that feel like they're starting to take over our life, well, some of those pressures can be mitigated by a meditation practice where you simply sit down and believe that there is intuition that you can hear. When we decide to tune in and listen, some of the other pressures, like counting calories or the number on the scale, can feel a little bit more manageable. I hope you find this helpful. I know you can do it. I know I'm working on it. We can work on it together. I can't wait to power up practice with you. So if you feel like you want to dive right in, I encourage you to do so. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Introducing Yoga Plus. Offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.